Hey everybody, I'm going to try this out today to teach you some stuff about Newton's laws. Um, let's leave kinematics in the dust for now and move on to Newton's laws. If you're still struggling a little bit with kinematics, don't worry. We're going to sort it out. Um, and Newton's laws will actually help, I think. So we'll carry forward and then we'll go back to the kinematic stuff. And I think it'll be a lot simpler um, after you've learned Newton's laws. Physics is kind of hard to teach linearly because it's all connected. So we're going to try to connect all this stuff up. So to start with, Newton's laws. Uh, these are fig Newtons that I thought was a funny joke. <laughs> Let's move on and look at Newton's first law which is called inertia. Take a look at these trucks and you'll see that what's happened here is there's an icy road and one truck has stopped or it's kind of been uh, kind of gotten into an accident or whatever moved off to the side and the other truck has tried to slow down and the front of the truck has slowed down but the trailer in the back the wheels in the back wanted to keep going the same velocity and so it had nowhere to go but to swing around into this other poor blue truck um, this is a good example of inertia I got another good example that my daughter I took this a few years ago but she's going to show you some stuff about inertia Uh, so that was done a few years ago, obviously, but it's still a great example of inertia and Newton's laws. Um, the I'm just going to get try to get this back to a full screen here. Um, so the egg drops straight down because the it has inertia. So inertia is a property of all matter. Anything with matter has inertia. And, and inertia, the, my basic definition of inertia is stuff keeps doing what it's doing. That's the simple version of it. Newton didn't put it quite that way, but I think that's the best uh, way of explaining it. Stuff just keeps doing what it's doing. It tends to keep, if it's moving, it tends to keep moving at the same velocity. If it's sitting still, it tends to keep sitting still. The only thing that changes an object's motion is a force. Now we're going to learn about forces, so I'm going a little bit ahead here, but there's a misconception. If I ask you what is a force, a lot of people will say force makes things move. That is not true. Forces create change in motion. They do not create motion. Write that down somewhere. Very important. Forces do not create motion. They create change in motion. Now, you might think, well, if I, if I take something and uh, slide it along a table, it will stop. So how, why is it just stopping? And that's because we have friction in our world. And friction is a force, and we'll talk more about that later, why friction is a force and how that works. But it's kind of a, it's tricky to learn this stuff in our world because we walk around in this soup of the air 
and there's friction and we're constantly, our motion is constantly being resisted. Out in space where there's no air, um, if something is pushed, it'll move like the Voyager spacecraft. And the Voyager spacecraft is going very fast right now. I think it's about 17,000 kilometers um, an hour, something like that. I'll look that up. And it's not slowing down. It's not stopping, and it won't stop. Current calculations is that it will move at the same velocity, largely unchanged, for a billion years. And it will never hit anything and never slow down. So we live in this kind of strange world of friction where everything we do, um, the air resists us, the ground resists us, um, and so things tend to stop moving, seemingly on their own, but that's not quite true. There's a, there's a force acting against them. So if there's no force acting against a motion, it will continue to move. And if it's sitting still, it will continue to sit still. And that is the property of inertia. Here's how Newton um, formulated it. I wonder if I can move myself over there. Not sure. Um, well, hopefully you can figure this out. Uh, so he said an object's motion will stay the same unless an outside force is applied to it. This is called inertia. Stuff keeps doing what it's doing. Okay, so... Uh, I'm gonna post these. <laughs> I'm gonna post these slides so you can go through it as well. I'm blocking them right now because I haven't figured out how to do this properly. But inertia is the tendency of an object to remain at a constant velocity, even if the velocity is zero. It tends to remain constant. Oh, I'm trying to get out of the way. Um, all right, here I'll duck down. See, so see if that works. Oh. Um, imagine that you're racing a go-kart list three times when you experience inertia. I'm going to give you this one. Um, when you hit the gas pedal, you go forward and you tend to go, whoa, and you go way back. That's because your body wants, it doesn't want to, but it tends to keep doing what it's doing. So if you're sitting still, and I'll go sideways for this. If you're sitting still and you're going to drive forwards, you hit the gas, and you're going to go backwards, and you... And it seems like you go backwards, but you don't really go backwards, do you? Really, you're sitting in the same place, and you're, because the cart is moving underneath you, it feels like you're going backwards. Same thing with when you turn. Um, when I was in high school, there was, uh, uh, weird, my face looks so weird here. Um, when I was in high school, there was, uh, <laughs> what was that? Strange. Uh, anyway, we had uh, trucks. Everybody had, um, everybody had uh, kind of muddy trucks, and we would go out and and on a on a normal lunch hour, we would take our trucks out and go mud bogging, and and uh, we had. A lot of our trucks had these bench seats in the front, so you had this long, flat seat. And uh, you got to know that if, if you had somebody that you liked in the truck with you, you could turn the corner, and if you turned to the right, the person would seemingly slide over towards you. And uh, that, was a, that was a trick that uh, we used with varying amounts of success. The real truth is, though, the person didn't actually slide over. It's like when you're, when you're in the car, if you're driving or someone else is driving, and they turn the wheel, you think, oh, I, I lean over, right? The car is pulling me, and I'm leaning over. But that's actually not what happens. Really what's happening is you're going straight. And when the car turns underneath you, you want to keep going straight. So you're, you're in the car, and the car's moving, and the car turns, and you want to keep going straight, and so it feels like you're leaning over, but really what's happening is the car is dragging you from the bottom over. So you're getting pulled um, kind of out from under yourself. So when you go around a corner in a car, 
you're not being pushed to the outside of the corner. You're actually being pulled in your seat towards the inside of the corner. And your body tends to keep going straight. And that's why the bottom of you is pulled out. Um, and that's an example of inertia as well. And then, of course, when you hit the brakes, you get you feel like you go forward. Um, when I was in high school, I had this girl that I liked, and uh, I bought her some balloons. That girl is now my wife. And uh, I'll never forget there were those helium balloons, you know, with the, with the happy birthday or whatever it was at the time. And I hit the gas, and it was funny because I had these few balloons in the car, and they went forward to the windshield. And it took me a little while to figure out what was going on. I'll see if you guys can, can figure that one out. Um, when you come to class, let me know if you, if you figured out. And then when I hit the brakes, normally you know how you hit the brakes and things fly to the front, right? Well, when you hit, when you hit the brakes, the helium balloons, they went to the back. And so it was this kind of game I had to play of hitting the gas, but not too hard because the balloons would go forward and then hitting the brakes and they would go back. Um, try to figure out why that is the case. Okay, let's keep going here. So... Another way of thinking of Newton's first law is that if there's no net force on an object, then it will stay at a constant velocity. If it's not moving, then it still has a constant velocity. The velocity is just zero. So imagine you've got a book sitting on a table. There's a force of gravity pulling down on the book. There also is a supporting force, a normal force pushing up on the book. This is kind of um, counterintuitive to a lot of people. They say, like, how, how can that be that there's this there's this force pushing up on me. Well, if, I, if the force of my chair was not pushing up on me right now, then the only force acting on me would be gravity. And so therefore I would fall. I would have to accelerate at negative 9.8. But I'm not falling. And the reason I'm not falling is because the chair is pushing up on me, right? So right now, wherever you are, there's a normal force pushing up on you, keeping you at a, at a constant velocity. Okay, so you're, if your forces are balanced, you will stay in the same place or at the same constant velocity. If I drop the book from two meters, there's only a downwards gravitational force acting on it. So if you, if you lift something up and you drop it, obviously you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna have acceleration downwards and that's because there's no longer balanced forces. So it's gonna accelerate. And that's it for inertia. Uh, I'll put up a couple more of these, and hopefully these are helpful. If, if there's something that bothers you about it, and I'll, I'll keep trying to work on it. I look really weird eh, with these glasses, these like oh, crazy eyes. Oh, it's reflecting the screen in it. That's fine. Okay, so i got to figure out a few things. But um, if there's parts of it that bug you or things that you want me to do, um, example problems or anything like that, I can throw that in there. But hopefully this was helpful, and we'll go on with the next one. Thanks.